Good morning everyone. Um, welcome back. Uh, this is another video on the on the equipment series that we have going and today we're going to be discussing uh, the trekking pack or hiking pack which I find to be the most suitable for uh, um, a half day trek in Malta but which however uh, which however uh, still takes into consideration um, some some facts to uh, help you go back or if you're stuck in a situation um, to uh, get yourself out of that situation uh, safely and effectively the pack that I carry is about a 20 liter pack it's actually a, a Quequa uh, 17 raid pack uh, which I bought from Decathlon it's, it's a chain which we have here in Europe and uh, it's it's quite good it has a it has a place for a hydration bladder it has side pockets um, it, it has uh, these belt buckles for chest and uh, waist it's uh, padded quite well next to the hip area and the lumbar area and in the middle it's quite clear it's it, it's it's free of any any cushioning so that the heat will actually move move up okay so let's discuss the equipment which i carry in this pack So here, here I just took out the the stuff, the equipment that I carry in the front pocket of the pack and and the side pockets. This is the the equipment which you would need to get to most quickly um, when when you're trekking. Um, on the side pockets, I have I have a very good uh, locking knife. It's a Wenger, Wenger range, range, Ranger knife and it has a locking blade um, as well as a, as a good saw apart from like can openers, uh, screwdriver and also a corkscrew. You never know when someone is carrying a bottle of wine so that's always good to have with you. And, and also I have uh, a buff, um, these are very comfortable, uh, very comfortable uh, pieces of kit to carry on with you, um, this is uh, made out of cotton and, is also, and also provides UV protection and as you can see I have the, a buff with the Maltese cross. In this pocket I carry a Petzl, Petzl Tikina. It's a very small, uh, very small and very light head torch, but it's it's uh, very comfortable and uh, it gives out a very good, uh, very good beam. Just in case I get caught out and uh, it gets dark. Over here I have a windshielder uh, slash raincoat. Um, it's in red so that I'll be uh, visible <coughs> and if I need to attract attention I have a good color um, I believe when you're going trekking it's not all about uh, being camouflaged and all these tactical uh, pieces of equipment I think uh, if you're just going trekking colors are actually good um, because uh, if you're caught in a situation you you have to make yourself visible all right and very in a very accessible area of the the pack i carry a life system uh, first aid kit now uh, i'll have a separate video on on my first aid kit but basically you have to have your first aid kit in a very accessible 
uh, area of, of your pack or if you're camping you put your first aid kit somewhere that's readily available just in case someone needs it or you you need it um, to to tend to uh, wounds or whatever else happened okay as you can see um, the the pack opens to make space for a very large main compartment which is uh, very easy to access as you can see this this opens as a form of lid and uh, you have a lot of space there and up here there's a small there's a small pouch where i keep uh, a miltec a miltec uh, all weather shirt pockets it's all, always useful to take some notes um, I carry a small handkerchief which can also serve uh, the purpose for some dressing I have a good signaling mirror and also I have the, the rain cover for the, for the pack Okay. Now, over here I have a carabina, and this is the the hydration bladder. I changed out the original bladder for a Camelback two liter bladder. This is my uh, navigation equipment. I'll open and discuss this shortly. I carry. I like to carry a uh, Mora clipper, which also have, has a fire steel, some cord on it. Uh, underneath the cord I have a GI can opener. Here I have some, some duct tape, which always comes in handy. And protected under just one layer of, uh, of duct tape, I carry some impregnated material, which, which helps a lot to start the fire. Okay, then I carry, then I carry this uh, this stainless steel cup, which has about 50 feet of paracord. I have It also has a, a basic skit, which I'll discuss shortly. A brew kit. Please don't take note of the dangerous gases sign. And also a piece of cloth, which is uh, cotton. The last thing I carry is some sailing rope. Um, this is not intended. It's not intended to be used for uh, repelling. However, it's strong enough to take your weight if you need to, if you need it to. Over here, I have uh, uh, 35 feet of uh, of rope. It's uh, 10 mm nine millimeter thick sorry and it can easily take my weight this in conjunction with the carabina uh, makes makes it a lot easier if i'm uh, in a place where i need to uh, rappel down uh, for a safer area and the paracord could be used in a prusik knot manner um, to, to help me uh, descend uh, safely okay now that we've seen the main components of the of the items that I carry I'm going to discuss the navigation equipment 
uses for a knife, the basics kit and the items that I have in the brew kit. Uh, please bear in mind that I always keep some space to carry some some fruit with me or 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 snacks uh, along the way. All right, so this is the the navigation equipment that I that I carry with me. Uh, this was all in the in that pouch. Um, in conjunction, I use the notepad just in case I need to take some coordinates um, to take uh, to set out my route. I carry a good lens. This could also be used to make fire. Okay. I have a map measure to measure out distances. Uh, in several scales, I have from 1 is to 20,000, 1 is to 25,000, uh, 1 is to 50,000, and 1 is to 75,000. Then I have on the other side, uh, it's centimeters to kilometers and inches to miles, which is very handy if you're in a, if you're just negotiating um, a route and uh, obviously you don't need to stay thinking and converting distances and it does the job really well this is um, an 8 issue uh, silver compass which is a really good compass it can give you bearings in both mills and degrees and uh, it has a ruler and also a scale um, different scales for different maps um, as well as it has a very good lens this uh, this pouch is quite uh, water resistant how water resistant however it's it's not completely waterproof inside I carry both multi and gozo maps uh, these are both uh, one on a scale of 1 is to 25,000 and on top, coincidentally, I have a Gozo map. So <coughs> here I went ahead and opened up the basics kit which I carry and which helps to make things easier um, if I get stuck. Um, please note that th these kits are very small in size. This is a, a two ounce uh, tin. Uh, so, so obviously, I'm very, v very conscious about the the weight of the stuff that I carry for trekking. Um, over here, I have some water purification uh, sachets. We discussed this in an earlier video on the survival kit. Here, I have some. Uh, cotton buds and some impregnated material and a big lighter okay that's obviously used to make fire I have a good whistle I have a candle uh, another candle here uh, if, if used wisely this 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 candle lasts for about four hours um, straight so it can give off quite a lot of a lot of light as well in, in the dark and, and for quite a long time and over here I have a magnesium rod and also a ferro rod the last piece of kit that I carry is a brew kit uh, make sure to carry it in a container that uh, watertight or quite water resistant uh, I carry some coffee and, and sugar and also I, I carry these these um, OXO cubes uh, they're beef flavor and uh, uh, quite salty which is actually really good if, if you just stop to make a brew somewhere uh, it will it will regenerate uh, your energies and Obviously, I have a steel cup which can take about um, 
a bit more over than a pint of water 500 milliliters uh, to boil my water directly on a fire which I'll make uh, wherever I stop Uh, the last item that I have in my kit is a Mora clipper. It's it's a um, it's a very good blade. It's carbon steel. It's razor sharp. And uh, I mentioned it last because I put this knife in uh, in my kit uh, for two reasons. One, it's it's very light, so it's not going to be cumbersome. On on uh, and and that very uh, a lot of unnecessary weight to my kit because practically speaking um, you'll rarely need to use a knife however when you need a knife you have to make sure that you have a good reliable knife because uh, if you have a knife that carries which goes blunt quickly uh, it's not actually a good knife it's it's pointless to have it uh, so the sharper the knife can be uh, it's a lot safer because you use less energy to to uh, use it for to cut wood or whatever you need and and obviously since you lose since you use uh, less energy uh, to carry out whatever you want to carry on um, it's obviously safer because uh, you're not going to put unnecessary pr pressure and then uh, suffer the consequences if the knife slips um, on the knife sheet <coughs> I, I made, I carried on some uh, modifications. I have a Primus fire steel, which is uh, seven millimeter thick, and around it I ha it's secured uh, by a piece of rubber tubing. This rubber tubing, as we've said uh, in a in a previous video on the survival kits or utility kit, uh, can also be used um, to light a fire in very wet conditions, and it's it's just a fail safe option. Um, <coughs> wrapped around the sheet I have about 25 feet of uh, 130 pound tested uh, fishing line which is very very strong and which can uh, use uh, uh, which can be used for a number of purposes and also I have uh, duct tape and uh, beneath this duct tape I have some uh, impregnated material which could be used uh, to start a fire now the I put I put this knife uh, just in case uh, I get caught in a in a place and I have to spend the night there, or someone uh, gets uh, injured or something and we have to stop in a place and we have to either uh, improvise a stretcher um, or build some sort of sh temporary shelter until. Uh, the help arrives now and earlier earlier on in the video I I mentioned that I have that Wenger Ranger knife which is very suitable to carry out a number of tasks however uh, if if I need to build something which is uh, quite quite big or which requires some some uh, harder labor to put it in this way uh, to carry out I need a fixed blade knife because in my opinion it's a safer knife one last thing which uh, I forgot to mention because it was in the which I actually forgot I had uh, it was in the in the hydration portion of the pack um, I carry an emergency blanket just in case uh, someone uh, falls and can't move um, I'll just wrap this around him or her um, to prevent them uh, from from uh, the effects of exposure uh, in Malta we we have uh, a very warm climate uh, however the winters that we have due to the very high humidity that that uh, we have in our in our climate uh, it can get really really cold even if the thermometer is saying it's probably 8 or 10 degrees celsius 
it's 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 actually bone chilling because uh, of the humidity so um, a space blanket weighs next to nothing take doesn't take much space and it can prevent uh, quite a lot of uh, repercussions if, if if you don't have it or if you just become susceptible to uh, exposure okay so these are all the items here laid out that I carry with me uh, the pack weight without water weighs just under four kilos um, and with my two key two liters of water it will weigh just under six kilos I'm uh, 95 ki I weigh about 95 kilos um, I'm I'm an athlete I don't think that six kilos will will be that much of a burden for me when I'm when I'm uh, hiking or trekking and I think that the items that I carry will actually help me get out of a, of a situation if I actually find myself in one um, please feel free to to leave some comments uh, of what you would like to add or what you liked in the kit what you'd think is uh, redundant um, and just your views I'm looking forward to have a discussion going on this topic